So, so the attributes of the cloud that make it different from the outsourcing model primarily are multi-tenancy and pay-as-you-go, so the consumption model itself. So in past application hosted hosting scenarios, it was very much like buying my own IT infrastructure in that I had to you know, provision and over-provision provision what I thought I was going to need for my load and buy those boxes or buy them from the provider and then they were dedicated to me in the provider's hosting center. Uh, or on a server farm or something like that. Now, in, in the case of cloud computing, because it's all based on virtual technologies, um, and the providers get their scale, their economies of scale through, uh, through multi-tenancy, then you have all of a sudden, you've got a very highly virtualized environment with multiple tenants consuming the same resources. That's how they drive the cost down. But then the other piece of it is that you, it's the consumption-based model, so you pay only for what you use as opposed to over-provisioning and then only using 15% of it, which is the classic internal IT scenario, right, and, and in the hosting provider scenario too. So there are a couple of significant differences, but, but from the consumer's point of view, say if I were a line of business, from the line of business point of view, it looks very much the same <laughs> as application hosting does. And that's probably okay, right, because it's a model that they understand and you know, there are there's some advantages of, of the variable cost um, but from a technician's perspective which is the audience that I serve uh, you know they're very interested in you know the evolution of dynamic workload and so on to support this kind of thing which is very different from the application hosting scenarios we've had in the past Ooh, oh staying away from that um, well I th you know I, th I think it depends on use case in that there are some use cases for the cloud where you have true commodity, for example, in web conferencing, something like that, which is a software as a service entry point into the cloud. I mean, nobody wants to do that themselves. It's always going to be a better way to, you know, better way for most organizations to consume that kind of function. So I think for certain use cases, it's it's relatively stable and and is not likely to you know cause a, a mass exodus. Um, I think where it becomes more of, a, of an issue has to do with how well the cloud providers understand business continuity and disaster recovery and how well you're able to negotiate uptime agreements through the service level agreements and a lot of the, just the legal language at the contract, the, the contract um, between the between the providers and the consumers, so I think um, that is keeping is keeping people from going to the cloud. And I think what if there's ever some you know major outage or something that happens, then that will cause people to rethink their cloud strategies. But we're so early in this adoption cycle in terms of you know widespread use of the cloud that it's hard to say right now you know at, at what point people will back away from it. I think like any. Technical evolution, though there's there's a rush of interest to it right now that will that will level, and you know people will find places where the cloud makes sense, places where it doesn't make sense, and some cases where either makes sense, and you move workload from one side to the other, from internal IT to external IT, and you make choices based on what your needs are at that time. So as, as part of what we're seeing happening now is the rise of uh, cloud brokers or the, you know, the, the architectural concept of a cloud broker that has the relationship with you as the consumer but then proxies in all of the functions behind that so the primary contract you have is with them. And then that, um, that abstracts you from the levels of change in the, in the provider environment. And so, so we're, as I say, we're at the very early stages of more sophisticated cloud scenarios, and there are architectures that are emerging fairly quickly, though, I should say, over the last year and a half or so since you know, we started talking about cloud, the demand has been such that aspects of the cloud that were weak a year and a half ago are starting to mature fairly quickly. So it's, it's too early to tell what will keep people from backing away. It's too early to tell what will, what will make people move. It's, uh, it's very much um, you know, a, a dance right now between provider and consumer.